All right. I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to speak today. Um, I am an academic uh, researcher, uh, and my lab has developed a uh, cell-based platform for treatment of retinal diseases uh, with an initial target of retinitis pigmentosa. There is IP related to this, and a uh, virtual company named JSite has been founded as per my disclosure statement. Um, to give you an overview of this therapeutic, um, we'll jump right in. The product is allogeneic. Uh, these are human retinal progenitor cells, and uh, the source is fetal human tissue. Um, and then the primary target, as I mentioned, is retinitis pigmentosa, uh, which I'll tell you a little bit about. That's an orphan disease, uh, which has certain advantages. And the delivery is actually a simple intraocular injection, much as Lucentis or other uh, anti-VEGF type therapeutics. Um, so that's, that's somewhat different than a more involved surgical approach. And this can be performed under topical anesthesia, so that means just drops in the eye that numb the eye. Uh, and it could theoretically be performed in the office. Uh, we don't actually use immunosuppressive therapy or tissue typing for this process. Um, the cells themselves don't express a lot of MHC uh, in, a, in a problematic way, and uh, the eye is itself an immune privileged site, so um, we don't expect rejection of these cells as an allograft. Um, and the mechanism of action, this being a biologic, there could be a lot of different mechanisms of action that has been alluded to by other speakers. Um, but we're primarily looking at a neurotrophic uh, mechanism of action. That means we don't have to rely on integration of the cells into the host retina. Hence, we're able to deliver these cells with a simple injection to, as a bolus to the vitreous, and the cells can diffuse growth factors into the retina, and I'll show you all that. Um, so, to overlook, a, uh, give an overview of our project, the CMC uh, GMP manufacturing for the initial clinical trials has been uh, done at UC Davis with uh, Gerhard Bauer. The toxicology being performed with Charles Rivers Laboratory. Um, proof of concept has been a collaboration with multiple sites, primarily Cedar sinai Medical Center also UC Santa Barbara, and some of the work being performed uh, in my lab at UCI. The uh, clinical, uh, at this point we have a uh, draft protocol of our clinical approach, um, and we're busy collecting patients uh, pending the IND, which is our next big step, and so um, we're in the process of writing up the IND at this point. Um, just to give you an overview of our uh, manufacturing process, the key thing here is not how we do it, but to point out a few benefits of our approach um, in terms of facilitating a uh, cell-based therapeutic heading towards an IND. Um, for one thing, we're not using pluripotent cells, and that means that um, we don't have to purify our product in quite the same way. The safety bar isn't quite in the same place. Uh, we don't need a separate differentiation step. Also, there's no gene transfection step. Um, I, I mentioned the pre-differentiation. Then um, target cell selection. Some approaches you have to pluck your target cell out of a uh, uh, more heterogeneous population. We don't have to do that. Um, and we don't need an artificial scaffold, which can be a great thing to have, but it adds to the complexity of your IND application. So, I'm just pointing out how this kind of speeds us along in the process. Um, in terms of uh, safety and, and tox, um, our product is pathogen free. Uh, the karyotype is normal. That's very important for these kinds of cells. Um, I think safety is largely predicated on a normal karyotype. Um, we have in, in vitro assays for looking at whether the cells have uh, tumorigenic potential with a so soft agar assay, um, and that's negative. Um, but of course, we also do work in vivo in the animals 
We've done extensive tox studies um, showing that there's no tumor formation uh, up to nine months. Here's our proof of concept model. Um, this is done in the RCS rat. That's a um, rat with a, a spontaneous retinal dystrophy. Um, in this case, uh, in the image uh, that looks a little like a Maltese cross, what that is is the rat retina. It's a retina that's degenerating. And then um, you see these squares in the different uh, quadrants of this retina. What that is is a, a composite collage of a confocal microscopic analysis of the retina focusing at the level of the photoreceptors. And in this case, the photoreceptors are labeled with antibodies against specific photoreceptor proteins. Uh, red is for rhodopsin, and that labels rod photoreceptors if there are any. And the green is for the middle wavelength conopsin. And so as we uh, analyze these dystrophic retinas, we can ask whether there's any photoreceptors left or not. Remember that our uh, therapeutic intent is a neurotrophic and that we expect our product to preserve host photoreceptors. And as an example, uh, you see the control uh, montage that shows a general absence of labeling indicating the absence of the photoreceptors and below that a treated animal in which you see preservation of uh, the rhodopsin and the conopsin, uh, indicating a fairly diffuse uh, preservation of the photoreceptors in the treated eye. And then we also look not only anatomically but functionally uh, through a variety of methods. Uh, here are two of the methods that we're using. One is a behavioral response, that's the optomotor response, and you see the cell-treated eye in green is performing better than the sham-treated or untreated uh, controls. Um, there's also an electrophysiological uh, approach in which uh, actually extracellular electrode is advanced into the brain, into the visual centers of the brain, in this case the superior colliculus, which is the major visual processing area in the rat. Um, and here again, you can map across the, the colliculus and look for sensitivity, much as uh, Ray Lund uh, pioneered some time ago. You see the cell-treated uh, eye animals are doing better uh, than the sham, with the curve being shifted to the left, indicating improved sensitivity to light. Um, and in fact, the same group who did those earlier studies is doing this for us now. We also have a newer uh, addition to our electrophysiological approach, and that is the ERG. At first, we were reluctant to use that because we thought of it as a sort of blunt instrument for these kinds of rodent studies. But in fact, uh, we find that we are able to tease out uh, a signal in, in the animals. Um, but I don't have that for you today. Um, in terms of cell manufacturing, we start with GMP tissue, uh, GTP tissue, I'm sorry, good tissue practice, um, so that the uh, donors are screened for potential adventitious agents or risk factors for those agents. Um, there are also uh, blood samples taken uh, to uh, look for antibodies that might indicate exposure to those same agents. Um, and then the cells are cultured under uh, refined conditions that are different from the original work in the laboratory. For instance, uh, you avoid any use of serum. Uh, you have to wean the cultures off of antibiotics quickly um, and then uh, eliminate xeno products. And uh, also be careful for any media that might induce chromosomal abnormalities. Um, and. Uh, Parenthetically, our freeze-thaw data shows good viability. Um, so uh, it, you never know if the, the freezing of the material might affect its properties. And uh, we've developed all the SOPs for all this that will be part of the IND application. So uh, looking at the overview of the team, uh, we've got quite a few people in our staff at uh, UC Irvine now. Um, and we have a clinical uh, arm that's getting ready to go uh, once we get the IND underway. Um, we have subcontractors for the GMP manufacturing, 
and of course the other aspects of this project that I mentioned. But I also want to mention Retina Vitreous Associates in LA who are uh, one of the top private sector uh, retinal surgery uh, thought leaders, and, and that's run by David Boyer, who's uh, eager to participate on the clinical side. Uh, we have a number of uh, consultants um, who are helping us with product development and various aspects of both the IND and, and moving forward with this uh, as JSite uh, uh, begins to uh, spin out a UC Irvine. We also have a collaboration with the NIH by way of the NCATS program. Uh, that's uh, a center for rare diseases, rare and orphan diseases, and they're looking at ways to accelerate uh, products for treatment of orphan diseases, and this is actually the first stem cell-based project that they've adopted uh, to help us out. So JSite, uh, as, as you know, is a virtual company getting us uh, an easy start here, but uh, has already jumped into action and licensed the IP from the UC Regents and participating in a, a broad international protection on that IP. Um, and so now we're getting to the point of transitioning uh, JSI from a, from a virtual company to a more industrial uh, unit. So um, we're looking for the seed funding and to transition JSI out of the UC system and to increase uh, corporate visibility for JSI. And so we're, we're well s set up right now by way of CIRM to go into the initial clinical trials, um, but we're interested in partnering, uh, moving down the road towards phase two. So thank you very much. And I'll take any questions. So we're, we've elected to do intravitreal injections for a neurotrophic approach for the disease to keep it as simple as possible. Um, these cells, and I didn't get into it, these cells are capable of differentiating into new photoreceptors. Um, so in that way, a subretinal approach might be good for a cell replacement strategy. Of course, there's plenty of unmet need for cell replacement, um, but it's also the case that uh, it would be really great to get some kind of clinical efficacy as soon as possible. So we elected to take the simple approach first. Um, but that said, we're uh, launching another project to look at the subretinal application of these cells. Dr. Clay. Uh, I wonder how many cells are you injecting? Well, it depends on the recipient. But in the rat, um, so we did a dose ranging study. So um, we uh, started off around, I think, 7,000, worked our way up, um, and somewhere around uh, 100,000, you can still get them in there, but uh, it's, it's not showing any additional benefit. Right, thank you.